Okay, so I obviously haven't made a video in a while and I feel like I'm always making them in my car, but we have some updates. I want to make a video like just kind of explaining what to expect while your significant other is in basic training. Um, I don't have one of my kids right now, so I feel like it was the perfect time. The other one's sleeping back there, so. But I feel like there's like not enough videos out there to kind of like prepare the spouse for trans the transition into just being a normal civilian family to becoming a military family. So I obviously don't have very much. Today is November 10th. Yes, today is November 10th. My husband left for basic training on September 28th. So we're coming up near the end of it. He has two and a half weeks left at this point. So I just bought an outfit for his graduation. I'll put in a little picture or something of what it looks like. Because we're not fully done, there will be like a part two to this, to like, as like what to expect the last two weeks and what to expect for the graduation. Um, I will be also making a vlog on his graduation day. We are gonna be traveling to a different province. We're just driving there because it's only like four hours away from where we live. But we will be traveling to a different province. It will be my first time and my children's first time going to a different province. So even though they're not really old enough to understand, I'm very excited about that. We'll be getting a hotel for the night. My parents will be coming as well. And then we'll be meeting my husband's family there. But let's get into the video, I guess. Also, I should preface. This is for Canadian military families, which we don't have enough content out there. Anyways, uh, so he's been had a very long uh, application process, so we're not going to get into that. I will wait for him to get home for us to get into that, but he got an email with his contract. It is a three-year contract that he signed for his trade, and it gives you like the start date, how much your salary is going to be, all of that fun stuff. So he left October 28th, so the first four or sorry not October he left September 28th um his actual basic training didn't really start until October 1st but he had to be there a couple days early which was fine um but it does kind of start then so I'm not gonna get too much into detail about what they did each week but more what the process was like for me because I feel like there are some videos out there like if you go on reddit you can see what they do each week um there's also on youtube it's called basic up you can watch videos it is from a few years ago but you can watch videos of people going through basic training just to see what they kind of do and all that fun stuff uh, so the first four weeks that they're there is the indoctrination period to help transition them from civilian life to military life so uh, from what i've heard it is a lot harder for them the first week is the hardest because it is such a big jump um but so all platoons are different so uh, there is usually a few platoons going at the same time but my husband was able to call me every night of that first week they will get their phones taken away if their course if their platoon messes up too badly my husband's has always been very good with that they have never had their phones taken away so it has been very nice now the amount of time that they can call you does depend on the platoon and the instructors that they have so some people may only be able to call for like 30 minutes from like 8 30 to 9 um, they might get an hour. My husband's staff doesn't usually go up, so he calls me basically once they get dismissed and get up to their room, so like around 6.30ish. And then he talks until like midnight, like whenever he goes to bed. Um, now he does stay up so late because their day is not done when they get dismissed. So they get dismissed and then they'll have like homework that they have to do or they have to get ready for inspection, get their PT together, their laundry, all that type of stuff. So they don't usually go to bed until late. And then during the phone calls, he's also very busy. So we'll sit on the phone, but we barely talk to each other. So we just kind of do our own things. I have two kids that I'm taking care of. He has his stuff that he's getting done. He's talking to the people there. They're helping each other for their tests and all of that. So you might not get a lot of time to talk to them, but yes, the first four weeks are the indoctrination period. And during that time, they're not allowed to get their weekend leave. So once the first four weeks are over, they start being, they get not a little more lenient but they're allowed to come home for the weekend so 
One second, let me check my notes because I have something. Let me fix my phone a little bit here. Okay, so I just want to keep going back to my notes. My notes are on my phone, which I'm also recording on, so the frames might look a little different. Anyways, I don't want to miss anything. So, after the first four weeks, their indoctrination period is over, so they are now allowed to get leave passes. So, there are two different types of passes. They can get a weekend leave pass or a day pass. So, the leave, or sorry, the day pass, they can leave that day from, I think it's like 6 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock that night. They need to be back in their platoon up at their room. Um, I don't really know too much about that one because my husband's never done it, but he has done the weekend leave pass So you can just do a weekend leave pass and You'll just be able to like, you know Go to the bar with your friends or just sleep in a hotel to have a nice comfortable bed to sleep in My husband and his friends have been doing the extended leave pass So with that you can travel up to 500 kilometers away from base So my husband does that one so that way he can come home for the weekend so they leave Friday night once they get dismissed, so like around 6 o'clock. Um, my husband has always came back around 10, 11 o'clock at night because we live four hours away. And he carpools with people, so like he, they use my husband's car and they all come because they all live in the area. We have another person, his platoon, who lives in the same city and another one who lives like an hour away. Um, so they do that and then it, he is home for that Friday night, all day Saturday, and then he leaves Sunday. I hear people. And then he leaves Sunday around 12 o'clock because they need to report back by six o'clock that night. But he wants to leave early in case of traffic and all of that, and they need to have like their guns ready and everything by six o'clock. So that's the way that that works. Um, it's always very hard on Sundays when he leaves again, and they can get their weekends taken away. So if their platoon is messing up very badly or they've failed a test or whatever, that all that type of stuff. There are some people that fail tests, they'll still give them a weekend pass. It all just depends on your instructors and everything. So my husband did get this weekend taken away from him as well as the entire platoon. So we don't get to find out though until Friday night when he gets dismissed. That's when they get their leave pass. So. I don't know if he's coming home or not until Friday night, six o'clock. Sometimes like I got prepared this weekend for him to come home. There's some things that I needed him to get done around the house and all that. And then I found out that night that he wasn't coming home. So that can be very hard. Um, I found it very hard this weekend just because I was expecting him to come home. He's been home the past two weekends. So I just, you know, I took it for granted that he was gonna come home and I shouldn't have done that. You never, that's one thing about the military. You never know what's happening. So, uh, what else do I got? One second, let me go. Okay, so my husband is going into week seven, which is their field week. So they do their gas mask training um, and then they go and they reenact like a war type of thing. Not reenact it, but like they role play a war. So they sleep outside for 36 hours. I thought it was the entire week. Apparently it's not. They're outside for 36 hours and they can't call you or anything. So there will be 36 hours where you just do not hear from them. 36 hours plus, I should say, because I'm not sure if they'll get their phones right after. Um, I'll let you know in my part two if they do or not. But yeah, so he is going into field week. So this week we also found out his, um, what he's doing after basic training. Um, some people haven't yet in his platoon, but some people have gotten their postings. So things are a little bit different right now in the military because uh, of different reasons. But some people are getting their postings and going straight to on the job training. Um, some people are going to their regular training my husband will be going to his regular training. We got the email stating where he needs to be, um, the dates that he needs to be there from. So he will be leaving in January again for three months uh, and then he'll get his permanent posting. So I believe, we're not completely sure yet, but I believe the next month he will be on leave once he graduates because it is Christmas time and everything. But yeah, so he will be leaving again. And this is the week that we found out some people are finding out their actual postings. But yeah, just going into week seven, you might find out a little bit more information because you don't really know what's happening until they graduate. Everything is very last minute. You never know what's happening. Okay, what so once your significant other passes uh, their test, so week six, the week that just passed is test week. So they have a test basically every single day. They have their inspections, um, like their major inspections, the ones that really matter. They have all of that. So. Once they pass all of those tests and they pass field week, you'll have a good idea of whether or not they're going to uh, be graduating. Um, 
And now I say that because, so last week, their test week, a lot of people got recourse because if you fail one of the tests, which you need a 60 to pass, but if you fail one of the tests, you're going back to week one. So they did lose a lot of people last week and then field week. So we have somebody from my town. We are a military town. So a lot of people from my town that we grew up with and know have joined the military. So somebody that we know was in, I think he was like week five when my husband started. But anyways, he passed all of his tests. He went to field week and he got injured. So he got sent back. He was put on medical, the, whatever it's called, the platoon thing that you go on to when you're hurt, TRP. He went on to TRP and then he is going to be replaced back into another platoon. So you don't really know what's happening until after those two things happen. And as far as I'm concerned, once they pass all of those, you'll have a good idea as to whether or not they're graduating. So, um, other than that, I believe from my knowledge that I have obtained, uh, after field week, the only way that they'll get sent back is if they swipe out. So if they forget something, they can get a swipe or in like for different reasons, they can get a swipe or they get like serious incidents if they forget a really big thing or they yell at an instructor or something like that. So once you swipe out, I think it's like seven swipes, then you get sent back to week one. They, or so, sorry, I messed up what I was saying. If they get seven swipes, they get sent back to week one. So if they swipe out during the time after field week to graduation day, obviously they're not gonna graduate if they get injured for whatever reason. Yeah, that's basically the only way that they, from my knowledge, they won't graduate. Uh, what else we got? So graduation day, this is now I'm going off of like just complete hearsay, but from what I have heard, graduation day always ends up on a Thursday. So you need to, graduation starts at two o'clock PM or 1400 hours. You need to be there by 12 o'clock or sorry, no, they open up to the public at 12 o'clock, but you need to be there by 145. The earlier you go, the better just so that way there's a bunch of different platoons that graduate on the same day. So you need to make sure that you are sitting in a spot where you can see your significant other and their platoon. And then from what I have heard, they have a reception after that lasts an hour. So graduation ends at three, the reception would end at four, and then they have until 10 o'clock that night to be able to go out. So you could you can't go out and drink with them, but like you can take them out for dinner and stuff like that. So that's what we will be doing. And then the next day they get shipped out to wherever they're supposed to be going most times. So my husband will be able to come home. People that have already gotten their postings will be sent to their postings for their on the job training. Uh, yeah, so you don't really see them after BMQ for most families. Um, and then I don't really know what training's like once they start that, but I will keep you guys updated on that. But yeah, like I said, I will be making a vlog on the day that he graduates. I will also be doing a part two to this to know what to expect the last couple weeks. But I just wanted to update everybody. Um, I said I was gonna vlog throughout his time at basic, but honestly, I just really haven't had time. The pay is a little wonky, I should add that. So my husband is the main provider for our family. He is quit, not, I guess he did quit his job. He quit his job the week that he swore in because he had heard that you aren't supposed to keep working. I still don't know if that's true or not, but he swore in and it took two weeks for him to be able to leave for basic training. And then it took a month for him to get his first pay. So in the military, you get paid the 15th and the 30th or the last day of the month. So it could be the 31st unless the, the last day falls on a weekend, then you get paid that Friday. So we were expecting a pay October 15th, which would have been a month from his last pay that he got from working at his job and that didn't come in. So we did get a double pay at the end of the month, but just make sure you have a savings account because it can hurt a little bit when you don't got that money. We are very middle class, I wanna say, lower end of middle class. So like it just, it was a little bit rough for a little bit, but it was fine, we got through it. Um, I don't know what the point to that was. Um, but yeah, so things have been a little bit harder, um, especially with him being gone. The first couple weeks were fine, and then the further on it got, it got a little bit harder to be without him. And then once he started coming home for the weekend, I found it very, very hard, just because I got that little bit of taste of him being back, just for him to leave again. The kids have been very good about everything. The first couple weeks, Michaela, my oldest, she's three years old, almost four. She was having some issues, but she is all cleared up from those. She 
thinks that so my husband's going into the air force and she thinks that the planes that fly over us like i said we live in a military town it's air force here um so we see planes all the time and every time she sees one she goes oh it's daddy so we just kind of move into that you know like give her a little bit of comfort like yeah he's probably waving at us right now so it has been it has been okay i'm not looking forward for him to leave for the three months uh, but it is only i think it's three hours away so he will be able to come home whenever he can which will be nice i know a lot of families don't have that luxury but yeah that is what's happening what's going on and that's what's to come i'll talk to you guys next time bye